Hey, how's it going? Chiefs Rays Bolts here with a video I have been eager to make since 2017. I could have made this video in the past few seasons, but coincidentally that's when life took a step up and I just lost a lot of time. Couldn't really put that time aside to make this video the way I wanted to. But now that I am here, I am so beyond excited to make this video and share it with you. From 2017, to 2021, I visited every Major League Baseball stadium, and this is how I rank them. So often you see these online rankings from credible sources, but the problem is that these people are just going based on reviews and how the public commonly views these ballparks. Now that I've been to every single one of them, I could tell you fairly what my favorites and least favorites were and why. So from 30 all the way down to one, I will explain just that. Now I will say it's very important for me now to explain the basis for my rankings. The basis I'm going on is mainly the overall experience that I had. I did give some bonus points to a couple of the ballparks based on staff friendliness, convenience of the concourses and park amenities, but really this was just how I felt being at the stadium and what I felt about it. History does not play a factor in how I rank these ballparks. These previously mentioned lists that I've talked about very oftentimes speak very, very highly of ballparks such as Wrigley Field or Fenway Park. And I guarantee you that you will have plenty of disagreements with me as we go along this list here, and that's totally fine. Like I've said in my ranking videos for years now, there is no such thing as a perfect list. This is simply my opinion from my experiences. All I ask is that you watch this video and listen with an open mind, given that I have personally experienced every one of these parks. I'm beyond excited to share this video with you as it has been literally eight years in the making, and it feels so good to finally be able to share this with you. Enjoy. At number 30, I have the Oakland Coliseum, and I think this one is pretty obvious. Yes, I know that the A's have played their last game in the Oakland Coliseum, but I decided to keep it on the list because the A's aren't really moving to a new uh, MLB caliber ballpark. They're stuck in Sacramento at a AAA stadium for a few years. So really until they move to Vegas and get that MLB stadium, I'm, not, I'm really not counting the Sacramento ballpark. And plus, I think it's important to still mention it anyways, given the fact that the A's played several decades in the Oakland Coliseum. Opened in 1964, the Oakland Coliseum really doesn't have anything special to it at all, aside from the history behind it. Just generally walking around, it felt like a prison due to the dull gray colors of the concourses, the lack of characteristics. More specifically, the lower concourse felt like I was walking around a New York subway station that hasn't been renovated in over 50 years. There was a small garden in right field called the A's Farm, and it's a cool little feature in theory to give it a little bit of character, but when I visited, all the plants were dead. Fitting, right? One positive that I will give the Coliseum is the Scheib Park Tavern located on the second level. Walking through it was very nice. So nice even that it made me forget momentarily that I was inside of the Oakland Coliseum. Of all the ballparks in the league, the Oakland Coliseum was the only one I visited where I left and said, you know what? I have no desire at all to ever come back here. But like I said, once they get that Las Vegas stadium in a few years, I will be sure to visit that one and perhaps make an updated ranking. We'll just have to wait and see. At number 29, I do have Wrigley Field. I expect disagreements with this one, but let me explain my case first. Wrigley Field is always praised for its coveted history, but again, I don't factor history into how I rank these ballparks. It's just how I experience them personally as a fan. Wrigley Field was opened in 1914 and it is painfully obvious when attending a ball game here. While it was very unique and cool walking around such an antique like Wrigley Field, you just simply cannot compare a stadium that was built in 1914 as to one built in the 2000s or the 2010s or the 2020s. You just can't do it. The concourses were extremely cramped. It was near impossible to get from point A to point B without bumping shoulder to shoulder with people. The only way to the upper concourse in the stadium was a concrete ramp, which is obviously expected for such an old stadium. But like I said, it was difficult getting around everyone. See, I don't dislike Wrigley Field. It's fun attending a game here as it makes you feel as though you hopped in a time machine and went back to 1937. Again, you just simply can't compare ballparks that are built 
so far between each other. Number 28, I have Dodger Stadium. This is another ballpark praised for its history. And history aside, I was not impressed with it at all other than the sheer size of it. The place was insanely huge. There's a lot of talk about their famous Dodger dog that you can get while attending a ball game here, and it is literally the most mediocre hot dog you could get at a ball game. The concourses aren't necessarily small, but because it is the largest stadium in the league by capacity, it feels that way when you're walking amongst 56,000 other people. The stadium to me was just below average. I didn't think really there was anything special about it as a park. I do want to be fair here. I did visit Dodger Stadium in 2018. Two years later in 2020, the Dodgers put $100 million into renovations on the ballpark, including a center field plaza, which looks really dope. Unfortunately, I have to base this stadium and my opinions of it pre-renovations to keep it fair, but I do suspect Dodger Stadium would rise a little bit in my rankings if I were to revisit. At number 27, I have Angel Stadium. 31 miles southeast of Dodger Stadium resides Angel Stadium. Angel Stadium always seemed really cool when I would watch it on TV. You'd see all the rocks and the waterfalls in outfield. Those rocks ended up being really small in person. They're a lot smaller in person than they look on the TV, but ranking a park off of rocks would be ridiculous, right? So aside from the silly rocks, the park just felt bland and outdated, which it was. Many people seem to overlook the fact that Angel Stadium was built in 1966. Even I didn't realize it was this old when I visited it. If there was one word to summarize this ballpark, it's cute. It's not a bad stadium by any means. There's just really not a whole lot to it. But it's definitely a chill place to watch a baseball game and I would not mind revisiting. The Angel Dogs are a slight upgrade from the Dodger Dogs, by the way. At number 26, I have Yankee Stadium. If you go back and watch my Yankee Stadium vlog from 2021, you'd know exactly how I feel about this park. I left that place with no other feeling than sheer disappointment. Somehow, the cost to build this place was $2.3 billion, with a B, billion. For that price tag, you better have marble columns, golden fountains on the roof, and an ultra 4K HD jumbotron. It better be as unique and prestigious as the goddamn Sistine Chapel. Instead, they have a hard rock cafe. Here's a summarization of Yankee Stadium from my Yankee Stadium vlog in 2021. I was actually so excited for this stadium. I had such high expectations and it's just, I'm legitimately disappointed. There's just, no, I, like, this isn't even because I, I dislike the Yankees. Like, I'm, I'm fair when it comes to stadium ranks. It's just, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined, that's what. This isn't even the best ballpark in New York City. Just saying. I have this ballpark ranked above the previously shown ones for one reason. It's newer. And despite its disappointments, it's quote unquote a nicer overall ballpark in terms of feeling like you're in a new house. And you would think the aesthetics the stadium lacks would be made up for with a Hall of Fame area, right? After all, you have 120 plus seasons and 27 World Series championships tied to your name. Nope. It's a puny little room with a handful of artifacts. That's it. All I'm saying is if you're one of baseball's most coveted and historic franchises, you should have a lot more than a Hard Rock Cafe and a white freeze underlining the roof. I think that's how you say that. The, you know, little weird gate looking things on their, right below their overhangs in the upper concourse. Yeah, that shit. <laughs> it's just genuinely when I went here, I was excited for it. Even as a Rays fan, I mean, Yankees... This has nothing to do with them being a team that I dislike. It, I, I was genuinely excited to see what the most historic team in baseball had to offer with the most championships in this $2.3 billion ballpark. I was excited for it. I had high expectations and boy was I let down greatly. It just felt so corporate. Like they didn't even consider the fan experience when they built it. It, it, it was it was mind boggling to me. All right, number 25, I have Fenway Park. I visited Fenway Park after I visited Wrigley. So naturally I was expecting more of the same. Not only was I wrong, but I was impressed with the stadium given its age. Fenway Park Park is the oldest current Major League Baseball stadium built in 1912, and it was the final ballpark that I visited on my ballpark journey. Fenway Park was small, of course, but the lower concourses had a couple of really wide sections that provided for easier convenience when navigating the park. In right field, the Red Sox have an impressive museum slash restaurant that I could have spent an hour exploring. Right field also provided a pretty spacious Samuel Adams deck which seems like a fun and comfortable area to watch a baseball game. 
Boston has clearly done a fantastic job in maintaining Fenway Park over the years. Whereas with Wrigley, I feel like they've done the opposite. Fenway Park was easily one of the most surprising parks to me. And I would absolutely love to visit again sometime in the future. Number 24, Rogers Center. Rogers Center in Toronto felt like a bigger, but much more bland version of Tropicana Field. And yes, don't worry, that's coming up very shortly here. There's hardly any character to it. Just dull gray concrete <laughs> everywhere. I mean, you would think there'd be more painted walls, give it some character. I just didn't feel that way. It's hard to get excited about it when walking around just because it didn't feel too welcoming. I will say the club level was very nice and the team store was top tier. The staff was also great. I would expect that in Canada. The concourses were spacious, so there was a good sense of comfort there. Of course, everyone loves the fact that they have a hotel built into the stadium. And I was fortunate enough to actually stay in that hotel when I visited Rogers Center for one night and it was honestly so dope. And watch out the window until 1 a.m. just staring at the field and watching the cleaning crews do their thing. Truly a great fan experience. Uh, but Toronto recently expressed interest in building a new stadium, believe it or not. So who knows how much longer Rogers Center will be around. All right, promise kept. Number 23, Tropicana Field. This is like a second home to me, all right? I've grown up going to many games every year at Tropicana Field. It's truly, uh, for me, such a place of comfort and it will always have a special place in my heart, despite the fact that they will be tearing it down in four years once the new St. Petersburg Stadium opens. Little side note, needed to happen 100%, uh, but there will be a part of me that will be really sad on the day that they demolish it. Tropicana Field is far too often stereotyped as being the worst ballpark in the majors. And if I'm being honest as a Rays fan, it was the worst ballpark for a long time up until Stu Sternberg took ownership of the team and started gradually upgrading it year by year. While I'm not a fan of Sternberg, one area of his ownership I must give him due credit for are his efforts in consistently upgrading Tropicana Field to make it a better, more fun fan experience. Millions of dollars were spent in the 2010s, most notably 2019 in stadium renovations, and what was once a terrible, depressing Major League Baseball stadium that felt like a giant prison cell is now a welcoming and fun place to watch a baseball game with a lot of unique things to do and explore. The first and third base food halls are more than spacious and provide a handful of great local and chain food options. The Budweiser porch in center field is a unique eating area behind the batter's eye with more local eats and TVs everywhere to see what's happening behind the wall. The ballpark and rec bar and patio in center field directly behind the Budweiser porch was added as a part of the 2019 renovations and it's always a great place to hang out for an inning or two. The giant two-story Story team store located upon entering through the main entrance of the stadium is truly one of the best team stores in the majors. The party deck is on the third level in left field and its concourse is entirely decorated and themed as Ybor City, a historic downtown Tampa district. And of course, the staple of the trop has to be the Ray Tank. A really cool experience right below the Budweiser porch in center field that makes you feel like you're at an aquarium and not a baseball stadium. All in all, Tropicana Field, often portrayed as the worst, isn't really bad at all. Again, used to be, not anymore. The media and online rankings by professional sports writers who've probably never been to the Trop falsely portray this park as terrible. And unfortunately, most people just go along with it without just experiencing it for themselves. If there's one thing I learned during this ballpark journey of mine, it's to not judge a stadium until you've seen it for yourself. Number 22, Nationals Park. Nationals Park to me is just the model for what an average ballpark should be. There's not a whole lot to it that stands out. Simply put, it's just everything a ballpark needs to be. The main concourse is huge and they have a parking garage in the outfield entrance of the stadium with the main team store directly below it, which was probably the most unique thing about it. What I will remember this place the most for is the employees for the wrong reasons. Nationals Park easily, easily in my book, wins the award for worst staff. Every single person there, every one of them, seemed irritated when you would ask them a question and acted like they couldn't give two shits less to be there. Other than that, there isn't anything necessarily bad about this place. Again, it's just extremely mediocre. It's what it needs to be. Nothing more, nothing less. Number 21, Comerica Park in Detroit. I didn't mind Comerica Park. 
It's a fun little park for sure, but really there's just not a whole lot to it. The big cat court located near the main entrance features the main team store, which is pretty big, a food court, and most notably a carousel. My ticket for the stadium was for the Tiger Den, which was cheap due to it being such as an empty game. And my seat was essentially a cushioned beach chair, which according to the Tiger's website was the first of its kind in baseball and is supposed to resemble the fashionable boxes at old time sporting venues. The left field concourse features some statues of their all-time great players generally walking around i really enjoyed how the main concourses had old school architectural style with a modern feel just an overall welcoming and relaxing place to watch a baseball game number 20 minute made park the astros have been a wildly successful team over the past decade so anytime you see a game on TV, Minute Maid Park looks insane. And for that reason, I was really excited to visit. It was one of the first parks I visited. I think I went in 2009 or 2010, but I was a little kid. I don't remember anything about it. So it was only right for me to go back to it, which I did in 2021. While I wouldn't say it reached my expectations, there really wasn't anything bad about the ballpark to note. Some of the concourses had dimmer lighting. So it reminded me a bit of medieval times dinner and tournament. The train in left field was definitely the highlight, as is with most fans. Anytime the Astros hit a home run, it actually moves across left field, which is a pretty cool feature. I also like the outfield glass that retracts along with the roof, giving you a close-up view of downtown Houston. Nothing about this park was bad per se, just underwhelming. Number 19, Guaranteed Rate Field. Guaranteed Rate Field is one of those ballparks that you don't often hear people raving about. It was ranked consistently low among the online reviews I had seen in comparison to most parks. But I'll let you know right now from firsthand experience, I actually really enjoyed this place. The gate on the third base side is actually across the street from the stadium. So you actually have to enter through a parking garage and walk across the parking garage bridge to get to the concourse which was weird. Another thing I noticed that was unique to this stadium in particular was the low height of the ceilings throughout the lower bowl concourse. For a team whose primary colors are black and white, they actually did a really nice job of giving the place character and adding color to it. The outfield concourse was big and provided for a lot of walking room. My favorite touch to the stadium was definitely their multicolored pinwheels above their center field jumbotron that animate and shoot fireworks for home runs. The place was very well kept and overall, I thought it was a fun place to experience a ball game. Number 18 is Oracle Park in San Francisco. Yes, I have Oracle Park often regarded as one of the best in the league at number 18. So let's just get the negatives out of the way for your clarification. First of all, it's one of the smallest parks in the league. Every concourse you walk through feels extremely cramped and at times it feels like you're walking through a maze, especially when you throw in the 42,000 people it holds. Secondly, other than the unique backdrop, you know, with the water behind you and you can see out to the bay, the stadium itself, I didn't think had a whole lot of character to it. Walking around it almost felt like a minor league stadium because of how small it was. The staff weren't the friendliest of all people. Uh, the food certainly wasn't the best. I just feel like they settled for the view of the stadium as compensation for the rest of the ballpark's quality. That being said, the park is still extremely unique and it is one that I would like to revisit in the future. There is arguably no park in the majors with a better view than Oracle Park. But if I'm being honest, there isn't much to it outside of its view. Number 17, Chase Field. I liked Chase Field a lot, actually. Of course, one of its more well-known features is the swimming pool in center field. I didn't have a ticket to get down there, but the fan host lady was kind enough to let me go down and take a look anyways, since it was still pregame. Definitely a fun feature. The concourses were pretty wide, which is a plus and the food options were very good. They also had a very big team store with lots of merch to choose from. It's hard to explain, but this stadium just felt like a desert stadium, like it belongs where it is. It fit right in with the city. I will say I haven't been there since the 2018 season, so there's probably some details about it that I don't quite remember at the moment, but I think there is a high possibility that I will eventually make my way back to Chase Field. Overall, this was a fun ballpark that I had a great experience at. All right, I'm not gonna give up a ranking spot for this. This is just a bonus ranking. I have Globe Life Park, the Texas Rangers Stadium from 1994 to 2019. While I don't include this park towards the actual ranking list, I will talk about it anyways because if it was still an active MLB ballpark, this is the spot where I would rank it. I visited Globe Life Park in 2019 during its final season, and it's truly amazing to me 
that they just up and packed their bags and left this park after just 25 years of it existing. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this stadium, but the Rangers, with all the Texas money they have, saw all the new sexy stadiums being built around the league and decided they wanted to join in on the fun. While the new ballpark is truly amazing in itself, and you will see that up in this list eventually, the first Globe Life Park was a beautiful place of its own. Ginormous and spacious concourses were tied together with never-ending ramps that made you feel like you were walking walking to the moon. Great viewing areas along the higher level concourse allowed you to take a glance at Cowboys AT&T Stadium right across the street as well as other views of Arlington. The place had tons of Midwestern character along with unique Texan food options. The place had an extremely unique suite setup along center field that looked like a three-story apartment. This was a beautiful stadium and while it isn't as modern or sexy as the new one across the street, Globe Life Park was truly a one-of-a-kind ballpark with a great fan experience. Leaving Globe Life Park for Globe Life Field is like breaking up with your longtime girlfriend to get with a hotter girl with a lot less personality. There wasn't much sense in it other than the visuals. Number 16, Progressive Field. There are many things affiliated with Cleveland that you could say, oh wow, that's awesome. But Progressive Field is one of those. A fairly spacious stadium that had a very modern, up-to-date feel to it, despite it having opened nearly 30 years ago. It just goes to show that the ownership cares about fan experience and keeping the place updated as needed. The dining options in the main concourse were unique as there were just blocks of food options popping up left and right. I wasn't old enough to drink at the time, but I do recall them having a pretty wide variety of bars within the entire stadium. It was an all in all great park. It felt very welcoming. We've reached the halfway point number 15, Coors Field. Denver. Opened in 1995. Coors Field in downtown Denver is one of the more scenic parks in the league. Up until a few years ago, you had a pretty good view of the mountains off in the distance until real estate prevailed and decided to block that view with new construction for the most part. But the stadium is very welcoming with a classy brick structure from the outside and a well put together park on the inside. The concourses are spaced nicely and provides for a comfortable overall feeling. Arguably the best amenity of the park, the rooftop bar is a spacious social area in the upper deck where fans can enjoy some local crafts and of course, some Coors Light. When I attended this park in 2018, I did a loop around the lower bowl concourse, but because I went here as a family reunion event for me, at the time I had family uh, living in Denver, I really didn't have much time to meander throughout the stadium, although I wish I could have. Coors Field is a very nice place to watch a ball game, and in my opinion, it's definitely one of the better parks in the league. Number 14, Lone Depot Park in Miami. I did have higher expectations for Lone Depot Park, one of the newest in the majors, Although it was open a little over 10 years ago, it doesn't feel that way at all. It's one of those few MLB stadiums that are ultra modern, shiny, sexy by the looks. But the one major problem I saw with it was its lack of character, <laughs> like, like really bad lack of character. It lacks color, period. Way too many walls were left unpainted, just that dull gray look that I've mentioned on, on previous ballparks. It lacks color, therefore it lacks life. Aside from all the blue seats that surround the stadium, as you can see in this photo I took of it, particularly in the left field concourse, there's a whole lot of concrete and nothing else. Huge lack of food options, color, decorations, and character. But character aside, it is still a sweet park to experience. It has a huge retractable roof, which doesn't get open too often due to the unbearable Florida summer heat and gigantic glass doors in left field that slide open to let the cool air flow in. It also provides for a really cool view of downtown Miami, reminiscent of Houston, who has the same kind of setup. And Miami, it's especially cool at night, but the stadium just lacks a lot for what it is. Number 13, Kauffman Stadium. I originally had Kauffman ranked higher for two reasons. One, having a bias for Kansas City. You know, I'm a Chiefs fan. I've been to Kauffman several times, uh, so it's, sort of like a second home. The second and biggest reason for me dropping Kaufman in the rankings was because this was one of the first ballparks I had been to of my ballpark journey. So as time went by and I experienced more and more parks, it had been quite a while since my visit to the K, you know, memory of it wasn't as great, but thankfully last summer, I was able to revisit Kaufman. Now I think I could give it a more accurate score. First of all, I love this ballpark. Major $250 million renovations from 2007 to 2009 make this place feel brand new. You would never guess it opened over 50 years ago in 1973. Kaufman Stadium features a spacious team store, many great concessions 
options options with local crafts to choose from, mini golf, a 322 foot long fountain that is used actively throughout the entire games and for home run celebrations as well, and an impressive Royals Hall of Fame exhibit that will leave you occupied for a while. And if you happen to have an upper deck seat, they have a beer garden behind home plate with a front and center view of Arrowhead Stadium across the parking lot. It is a fantastic place to watch a ball game, and I'm Kind of sad that they're trying so hard to get a new stadium built by the end of the decade. Number 12, T-Mobile Park. To me, T-Mobile Park shared a lot of similarities to Coors Field. The concourse walk around felt about the same and the concessions were very similar. Unique to T-Mobile Park, however, is their bullpen bar, a spacious area in center field with lots of seating. The gift shop was huge and fun to explore. And overall, it was a very pretty ballpark. I was fortunate enough the one game I attended here, to experience half the game with the roof open and the other half of the game with the roof closed due to rain. So I got to see the ballpark from both perspectives. It was almost kind of a more outdated version of the Brewers Stadium in Milwaukee, but overall I did enjoy what Seattle had to offer. Number 11, Citizens Bank Park. Citizens Bank Park was one of those really spacious, and open feeling ballparks, lots of great concessions and lots of things to explore. Aside from the generally rude staff, it's Philadelphia, I wouldn't expect anything less. I didn't have many negative feelings towards the overall stadium itself. The brick that surrounds the ballpark was also a very nice compliment to its character and the overall aesthetics of the ballpark. All in all, this was a gorgeous and comfortable stadium, a really fun place to watch a ball game, and I would not mind coming back here in the future. Number 10, Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Camden Yards is generally regarded as one of the top tier ballparks in baseball, and it's not hard to see why. The iconic warehouse in left field, complemented by all the other brick structures that make this stadium as unique as it is, makes for a super welcoming environment with a pretty view. Utah Street is a really fun aspect of the stadium that features a very spacious concourse and plate markers for every home run that has ever landed there. Staff was very friendly and there was lots to explore. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of footage to share with you uh, because it was very early on to my YouTube channel where I didn't film much of the experience at all. The backdrop of the stadium being Baltimore's skyline and the park area and center field with tons of picnic tables added a unique nature aspect to the feel of the stadium. It just makes you feel very at home being there. There's a reason my Oriole Park at Camden Yards is often regarded as one of the best in the majors. At number nine, I have City Field in New York. It is incredible to me how many light years better City Field is in comparison to the more expensive, lackluster ballpark just down the road from it. Seriously, Yankee Stadium's cost was more than double the cost of City Field. It truly amazes me. The bridge-inspired architecture of the stadium is unique and features what's called Shea Bridge in the outfield, a pedestrian bridge in which you can overlook the field, very wide and spacious concourses and resting areas for enhanced comfortability make the stadium feel welcoming. And of course, the iconic Big Apple that rises above the batter's eye anytime the Mets hit a home run. This was truly an awesome stadium. Number eight is Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. It's funny because you never hear much about Cincinnati's Great American Ballpark. If anything, you probably just think of it as an average stadium. But let me tell you, this might have been the biggest surprise of any stadium I visited. Super underrated. Just outside the stadium, you have a beautiful 16,000 square foot museum that is strictly dedicated to the 140 plus year history of the franchise. You could seriously spend all day in here just admiring artifacts of Red's history, like game-worn equipment and jerseys to World Series rings and trophies. It's such a fun place to visit, and it's not even a part of the stadium. Inside the stadium, you have tons of open concession area and picnic tables on the field level. In the backdrop of the stadium, you can see the Ohio River and steamboat stacks that go off for home runs. Next to the stacks is the batter's eye, which was a VIP area that is shaped to resemble a steamboat. This was honestly one of the coolest cleanest and most welcoming stadiums in the league and that is something I did not expect. Number seven is Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Sadly, I don't have any of my own footage from this stadium as this was just the second ballpark I visited in my journey. Didn't start my channel yet. Didn't start vlogging yet. So I just didn't even really record anything. I took a few photos and that was it. But let me tell you, this place is astonishing. With the iconic Gateway Arch in downtown St. Louis in the backdrop, the view is remarkable. There's a whole street of bars and walkways just outside the stadium entrance that are a part of the stadium experience. And there's actually seating over here where you can view games from across the street. Similar to Camden Yards and City Field, Bush Stadium has a lot of brick architecture 
that gives it life. It is absolutely one of the most beautiful places in the majors to catch a ball game. Back then I didn't explore quite as much as I would have liked to, but it's definitely at the top of my list for stadiums to revisit in the future. Number six, PNC Park. Speaking of remarkable views, PNC is widely considered to be the best of the best when it comes to the scenery and it's not hard to see why. The Allegheny River and the two bridges can be seen in the outfield with the Pittsburgh skyline behind it all. It is obviously one of the best in the league and overall the ballpark itself is super nice. I will say in comparison to a lot of ballparks it did feel a little smaller but besides that I thought the concourses were nice and it was a very memorable experience for me and would definitely go back. Fans were great, staff was great, very friendly people in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Number five, American Family Field. Milwaukee was amazing. From the gigantic parking lot tailgate culture to the inside of the stadium. It was extremely spacious. The concourses were great. The fans were great. The concessions were great. It was just a great overall experience. I thought it was a very comfortable place to watch a ball game. And my overall experience with the venue from start to finish gives me no doubt that it is worthy of being a top five ballpark in my ranking. Number four, Target Field. Opened in 2010, Target Field definitely felt like one of the most modern parks in the league. The interior of the stadium was stunning from the light colored brick to the modernness of the concourses and seats. This place was very aesthetically pleasing. They had a variety of upscale dining options with great food and probably the friendliest staff of any ballpark I've been to. The in-game experience was great and all in all, this was no doubt one of the nicest parks in the majors. This would be one of the first I come back to. Number three, Globe Life Field. Looping back around to the new hotter girlfriend with less personality. This is the newest stadium in the league opening in 2020. Globe Life Field is a goddamn cathedral. You won't find a more modern ballpark anywhere in the world. This place is quite literally a behemoth of a ballpark. And aside from its sheer size, the experience including the park was top tier. The beautiful brick compliments that surround the stadium to the spacious concourses, the concessions were about as good as it gets, and you can even get this two foot long hot dog called the Boomstick. This park was top to bottom incredible and a must visit for any MLB fan. While it's hard to get much better than a park like Globe Life, the size of it kind of tones down the intimate feel of being at the ball game. And that's kind of why I make that joke about less personality. But aside from that, I mean, seriously, this is a ballpark to be admired and it's one of the best in the world. Number two, truest park the second newest park in the league opening in 2017 the braves pulled off something truly admirable finding a shit ton of land in a suburban area and building not just an incredible ballpark but its own little city around it to my knowledge this was a first of its kind everyone seems to be copying the braves now the rangers in 2020 and the rays in 2028 the entire surrounding area of the stadium features hotels apartments retail restaurants and so on all incorporated into the theme of the ballpark this was an incredible place the braves truly have something amazing here the stadium felt ultra modern and spacious all around friendly staff great food great in-game experience everything about truest park was a great experience and i really do have a hard time putting any park above this one but after deep thought in consideration, my favorite park in the league by a very, very small margin is Petco Park at number one on my ballpark ranking list. Simply amazing. The warehouse in left field, the giant open park area in center field, the greenery that surrounds the concourses, the variety of concessions, the cleanliness and modernness of the stadium, and the backdrop of downtown San Diego made this place truly feel unreal. It was a really difficult choice between this and Atlanta for me to put it number one. But this is honestly the nicest venue I've been to across all major US sports. It's spacious, but not big enough to take away the intimate game day experience. Honestly, just the perfect size for a stadium. The staff was great, <laughs> food was great. It had plenty of character to it. It was the perfect size for a baseball stadium. San Diego truly won me over during my visit. And that's why it has rightfully earned the number one spot in my ballpark rankings. Well, that was a lot, but if you've made it this far, then I really do appreciate you for sticking it out and hearing what I have to say. I am extremely fortunate to have been able to visit all 30 ballparks in the league. It's something that I don't take for granted. I started this YouTube channel in 2017, just a little bit after I started the journey. So I think for every park minus Bush Stadium, I have a vlog 
of it on this channel. And all the footage and photos I used in this video were my own. You know, just being able to say, yeah, I've been to all 30 and yeah, I could tell you what the best ones were. I could tell you what I liked and didn't like about these different stadiums. It's something that is really awesome to me. And it was just such a cool thing to experience over the course of five years, 2017 to 2021. And when it ended in Fenway Park, I was sad that it was over because I didn't have anything else to look forward to. It had been such a fun thing for me to go into these new stadiums, not knowing what to expect, having certain expectations set and seeing if they lived up or didn't. You know, it was just, there was something special about experiencing a new baseball stadium for the first time. As of right now, the Oakland Athletics, like I said at the beginning of the video, they're going to Vegas in 2028. They're going to have a new stadium. I'll surely be there when that is open. And then, of course, my Tampa Bay Rays. It is confirmed we're getting a new stadium in St. Pete in 2028 as well. And that, for sure, is going to be a stadium that I go to a lot. I'll be very excited to share that with you when the time comes, when I'm 26 years old and that stadium opens. I, I can't imagine that I'll stop YouTube for any reason. This is something that I've been doing since I was a young teenager, and it's something that I still, to this day, enjoy doing as a hobby. So I don't really see myself slowing down anytime soon. But, you know, when these two stadiums open, I know there's still rumors here and there about Arizona wanting to get a new ballpark and, and Kansas City getting a new park by the end of the decade. And even Toronto wants to get a new ballpark. So, I mean, stuff is going to get built. Uh, there will be more stuff for me to experience. I still have about half of the NFL that I need to go to, although I will say when it comes to NHL arenas, NBA arenas, NFL stadiums, a lot of them feel copy and paste, whereas baseball is so unique and different. Each stadium had its own personality, its own character. And that's why it was so fun and unique to visit the 30 different MLB stadiums. They were all different from one another. None of them felt copy and paste whatsoever. Uh, so while I do still have NFL stadiums and NHL arenas to visit, my expectations for those aren't as high. That's just more so let me go watch my team play on the road, not just let's go to this venue because I want to experience the venue. Baseball is the only sport where fans do that go to the venue for the game day experience and not just to see their team play. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. This was a video that took seven years to make. So I really do hope you enjoyed. Please go ahead and consider subscribing, liking the video, all that good shit. And I will catch you in the next one. It's Chiefs Rays Bolts. Thank you again so much for watching. Peace out.